while working at NVC and Lucent Technologies. While working and heading different teams at Globe, he had the privilege to lead sales organizations covering the BPO and wholesale markets. He likewise strengthened his business development skills with a deep financial insight and was a recipient of multiple executive leadership programs at the company. He is currently Globe's Head for Business and Solutions Development, where he is responsible for heading Globe Business Next Technology Desk with key focus on cloud, cybersecurity, intelligent cities, and big data. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Francis Neil Mendoza. Globe Morning. In Globe, we greet each other every day in Globe Morning, regardless of time of day. That shows uh, that shows the hyper commitment of every individual on delivering the highest level of customer experience. On behalf of our owners and uh, leaders, uh, I would like to thank I would like to thank uh, the Philippine Retail Association for giving us this opportunity to partner with them again and collaborate with the retail members in terms of your transformation journey. My, pres my presentation will be broken down into four, or into four parts. The first part, I'll be sharing with you our transformation journey and the results of that journey. The second part, we will focus on the custom, your customer's behavior in terms of specifically the retail engagement. The third part, we will be sharing with you solutions that can help you transform your retail business. The last part of my presentation will be a video of our President and CEO, Ernest Ku, sharing with you the results of our transformation. There are four key pillars uh, in 2010 when we started our transformation journey. First focus was culture, second was network, third was IT systems, and fourth was the customer experience. As a result of that transformation, we now have 62.8 million mobile customers. We now have 1.3 million home broadband subscribers. With our current platform, we are, we are now supporting 1.1 million businesses. Businesses covering retailers, distributors, SMEs, and large enterprises. Let's not forget that this engagement is heavily driven also by partners. And this is nationwide. We now have a workforce that supports our current engagement with customers a total of 7,200 full-time employees. Globe has been passionate about innovation. So we've launched partnerships, innovations, and companies that we believe will create differentiation in terms of our offering. Uh, I believe uh, you're very familiar with our fintech company, which is Mint. Mint um, has two uh, major thrusts. First is our mobile wallet or the Gcash. And the second one is to support the unbanked sector of, uh, of the Philippines. Unbanked, we're going to compare our, our, uh, our economy uh, versus uh, China as an example. It's way, way low in terms of uh, the, the rate of, uh, of the unbanked uh, customers. In February, uh, Globe, uh, 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 Globe brought 100 leaders to China to experience the retail market, to experience how digital ready is China. And that experience was brought to, to our organization 
and that will beef up our customers' experience once we roll it out in 2019. Again, there are no changes in terms of our ownership. Our key stakeholder, our, our key shareholders are still Ayala and Sintel. The most important item when you embark on a transformation journey is really the buy-in of your owners. And we're happy to say that Ayala and Sintel have been supporting us over the years to really strengthen our transformation and make sure that Globe is relevant to every business in the Philippines. My next slide shows how we transform our culture. Our culture is very important where our leaders really lead this transformation. In 2016, when we achieved leadership in the telco industry in the Philippines, the next question that we asked was, what's next? So we revisited our culture, we revisited our purpose, and we recrafted our vision, our mission, and our purpose. Our vision is we see a Philippines where families, dreams come true, businesses flourish, and the nation is admired. Our mission is to do our part. We create wonderful experiences for people to have choices, overcome challenges, and discover a new way to enjoy life. Our purpose, in everything we do, we treat people right to create a globe of good. So this is the anchor of our transformation as we continue to deliver the service that you need, the service that you expect. The second transformation I mentioned a while ago was networks. The third was IT. In order for us to catch up with the behavior of the uh, of the of the behavior of our customers, shifting from legacy uh, legacy uh, behavior of voice and SMS to a more data hungry uh, behavior. Our network and IT systems were forklifted, literally, replaced entirely with a network that will cater, that has the capability to carry high bandwidth and high data. If you're going to look at the behavior of, of uh, an individual now, his phone should be a smartphone. Oops, I'm sorry, it should be an intelligent phone. And that intelligent phone should have internet access. When you have internet access, your behavior changes in terms of your thirst of information. Not only your thirst of information, but to do more productive things using your mobile phone. If you have a legacy network, the service that you'll get from a legacy network will be a speed lower than what you have now, a 256 speed versus a 10 MB speed. This speed is very important, and the only way for you to do it econom economically from a service provider standpoint is to replace your legacy system and bring in a new one. We partnered with Huawei, we partnered with Nokia, we partnered with Alcatel in order for us to bring this network in place. With this network, because of the change in terms of behavior, we have to bring you a rich content. And this content was heavily driven by our partners. In 2010 and in 2012, we brought in Google to start our business applications approach. In 2013, we brought in Facebook to be, to be our our partner in terms of driving social media, driving information, driving pervasiveness in terms of internet access. In 2014, we brought in NBA and Spotify. Sinong subscriber ng Spotify dito? Wow. Okay, malamang may playlist kayo. Yan saan i-share niyo yung playlist niyo. I'll be sharing my playlist later on. If, if you are uh, if your genre is my genre, 
Sorry, pero mas maraming millennial yata dito. In 2015, we brought in YouTube where we made the experience better. Better in a sense that we established a cache locally in order for us to maintain a better quality of your video experience. In 2016, we brought in Cartoon Network, we brought in Netflix. All of these partners, if we don't have that network or even transformation, transform, transforming our IT systems, these partners won't even invite us to be their partner. So that's a criteria in order for them to really make that experience together with us a better experience for you. Last year, one of, uh, one of my colleagues, uh, Joe Caliro, presented our detailed experience on how we've, um, we've revisited, on how we've recre recreated the retail experience from a traditional dummy phone uh, Gen 1 type of experience to a Gen 3 experience where you go to our store, you touch a real phone, the latest phone, you experience lifestyle. You experience the content that we have. You experience the video, the quality of service that you believe is to you. So that's how we transform our retail experience. I believe in terms of our Gen 3, we roll it out uh, nationwide, and we have, uh, I think, four in uh, Luzon. We have two in Cebu and one in Vietnam. Because of uh, this transformation and the digitalization of, uh, in the Philippines, this changed the way how people shop, very specific, very specific on how people shop. But let me share with you first uh, a research on uh, the pervasiveness of internet access. So we now have 67 million internet users. That's 63% in terms of penetration rate because of a population of 105 million. The Filipinos spend 9 hours and 29 minutes on average every day using the internet. And the top online activities are social media. Sino may Facebook dito? Teka, parang wala kayo Facebook ha? Alright. Sino mahilig sa video via Netflix? A browsing, of course, uh, browsing in terms of information, okay. shopping, looking for the best item, right? Online and mobile games, malamang wala dito, mga gamers. But online shopping, malamang marami. Yeah. Alright. Okay, so the top five line on online activities are social media, video, search online and mobile games, online shopping. And this is driving the pervasiveness of the internet. Before, the path to purchase used to be very simple. An individual goes to the mall, goes to a store, checks the goods, clothing, checks the merchandise. If he believes or he or she believes that it fits him or her and he wants it, he buys it over the counter cash or credit card. But now, considering the digitalization worldwide, the internet access pervasiveness, it, it, the journey of our shoppers has become complex. Masyado nang mahirap gawin. But there are three things that a customer wants on demand. It should be available online and should, it should be delivered on time. So with the pervasiveness of mobile internet access, you now have the option to purchase your goods anytime, anywhere. You can do it on your spare time, you can do it when you're home, and browse through which of the things you need in order for you to, to, to improve the customer experience. Again, once you really, once you search, 
you now consult and compare. Once you compare, you ask via social media the experience of that specific good or item. Then you order and they deliver. Um, recently, logistics companies has accepted or embarked on a payment scheme where it's COD already. So even the the population, the unbank population, they don't have a credit card, but they have uh, access to the internet. They can act, they can access these uh, retail companies. They can pay COD because of the transformation that these logistics are doing in order to capture 100% of the market. These changes compel retailers, specifically you, the members, to really innovate. How do we address access? How do we address where it should be available in the web and in mobile? How do we now expand loyalty through a digital channel? And of course, as a retail company, how do we now provide this service efficiently, secure, and of course, savings? This leads me to my next uh, part of the presentation where I'm going to sell something. So I'm here to share with you our solutions that can help you in your transformation journey and compete. We are here, Globe Business, to enable retailers to build a secure and a digital ecosystem. So, definitely, we will leverage on the transformation that we have in terms of our network. The most important part for us to address this market is really connectivity. Without connectivity, you're confined to a certain market only. But because of connectivity, your reach is unlimited. With connectivity, there should be resiliency and uptime. So to make sure that all our mobile customers should have the signal in their homes, in everywhere, in, in anywhere they go, in order for them to do these transactions. So Globe continues to invest, and that will part that will be part of my next slide. Invest in terms of really expanding our coverage. Second is on how we can uh, help you in terms of your digital loyalty options. So we have a group in in Globe called. Globe Ventures and uh, Globe Labs, who invested on crafting a loyalty program, a digital loyalty program, which is Rush. Of course, Mint will be doing the cashless payments. As a company, we want to focus. We want we want to help you in terms of your infrastructure. What's the best infrastructure, and how do we scale up based on your needs? It doesn't need. It doesn't mean that. When, we, when, when you design your infrastructure, you focus on being cloud ready immediately. Of course, it doesn't work that way. You have investments in terms of your legacy systems. We'll make sure that we maximize that investment and help you craft that framework in order for you to, to thread that path of digital transformation. Our solutions run on Globe's Resilient Optimized Network. We continue to invest. And as mentioned a while ago, that's a good thing about our culture transformation, where we get the buy-in of our owners. We recently embarked on a modernized data-ready mobile and broadband network. We invested $1 million to make sure there's expanded coverage and there's less in terms of congestion. We continue to make access to the internet available every time. So we've invested on a cable system. We launched it in 2017 that connects the Philippines directly to the US, passing through Guam and Hawaii. Our current 
our uh, the traditional connectivity going to the internet is you go to Hong Kong, Singapore, Japan, and the US. We have that path existing already. In order for us to have that 100% uptime in terms of internet access, we have to invest in a new cable, and this is the one that we launched in 2017. It's a 250 million investment, and we will continue to invest in terms of really providing you that internet accessibility. We also expanded our corporate data network, employing software-defined network, meaning we will be able to provide on-demand services already in 2019. When we say on-demand services, for example, if you have an internet connectivity with us, and, and because of your, uh, of your business needs, you need to expand it immediately, we'll be giving you that power by having the on-demand portal for you to do bandwidth on-demand. And that will be available in 2019. In February, we launched our SD-1 technology. The purpose of SD-1 really was primarily to provide resiliency in the access network. If you have a connectivity with us, your from your premise going to our network, we call it access. And in order for us to provide you a cost-efficient connectivity and resiliency, we've adopted the SD-1 technology. Our partner is Nokia. So we've launched this in February, and later on, if you have time to go to our booth, you can sign up uh, for a POC, or even experience what the SD-1 can do. Again, when you sign up in our booth, you are entitled to a raffle ticket that we will be raffling off uh, tomorrow night. And uh, I think uh, there are three prizes, so please don't miss dropping by at our booth and signing up. Okay, so this is very specific to, to what we're doing in uh, Globe, uh, in my turf factory. So we're creating an ICT platform that will give you the flexibility of cloud, the secureness of cybersecurity, and data center capability. So for cloud solution, we will be able to help you in terms of crafting your framework, in terms of adoption, coming off from a premise-based setup to a cloud, private cloud, and even to the public cloud. Our key partner in our cloud offering is AWS. So we are an AWS partner, and, and we support uh, the two types of uh, connectivity going to AWS, via the internet or a private connectivity. For cybersecurity, we partnered with one of the leading um, cybersecurity providers, which is Trustwave. So Trustwave was acquired by Singtel in 2015, and uh, we've established an advanced security operations center here in the Philippines, one out of nine global wide. And uh, the advantage here is for us to really manage threat mitigation and threat analysis near real time. We continue to expand our data center footprint footprint and we've expanded our latest one is in Davao which where, where our CUS cable system is terminated. This is a sample use case uh, with a partnership of AWS and the benefits that can bring a retail company. So this is an online shoe store that uh, beats out limited uh, lim uh, limited edition shoes every month, that's once a month. For them to be able to do this, they need to invest in terms of the acquisition of servers. Servers that will handle this one day activity every month. So they have to spend 300,000 for each server in terms of acquiring it. So that's a total of what? That's a total of 900,000. Now, they launched this via AWS. And when they launched it, they only spent 45,000 pesos a month. 
oh, sorry, 45,000 pesos a year. And they don't have to worry about obsolescence. They don't have to worry about maintenance support. They don't have to worry about maintenance renewal. So with AWS, depending on how you want to scale your business, we can help you prioritize your workloads. We can help you define your framework on how you want to adopt a full cloud envi environment or a hybrid cloud environment. Of course, security is very important. There are three types of securities. You have to secure your network, you have to secure your access, and you have to secure your information. And we can help you on the adoption framework that you can follow in terms of rolling out your cybersecurity plans. Um, when you go to our booth, you can also subscribe to our cybersecurity posture assessment program. The CTA is a program that will assess your cybersecurity posture. So that will be a good starting point when you define your framework. For our cloud and cybersecurity and our data center initiatives and even our ICT platform, we rely heavily on partners. And our key partners are AWS and Trustwave supported by Google, you have VMware, Microsoft, and of course, our center of excellence in that. Okay, so before I lead you to our video, um, again, I would like to uh, invite you to our booth, try to experience what we have in terms of SD1, try to subscribe to the various services that can help you in your transformation journey. We can also host you um, in our ASOC. We can host you in our Gen 3 retail stores if you want to, to take a look at that experience. We can gather our executives, specific ex executives, depending on your need, in order for us to share how we went through our transformation journey. Again, thank you for listening. Thank you for hearing me out. Thank you for not over uh, my presentation. I'm not as ex exciting as Joe Caliero compared to last year. But again, I hope I delivered the message well. And I'll lead you now to our video. And, uh, and again, uh, PRA, thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you. Hi, my name is Koo. I'm President and CEO of Globe Telecom, um, a, a leading mobile operator. Well, Globe's a theorem on Telco operator in the Philippines with both mobile and fixed line services, about two and a half billion US dollars in revenue. The most important thing for Globe at the moment is to remain relevant to its base. Uh, Telcos today are becoming less relevant given the fact that you know we can be reduced to a pipe, a pipe that consumers use to consume content. For Globe, we want to provide the full lifestyle. We want to enable a Filipino digital lifestyle. And to do that, we have to continue to innovate. The cloud actually gives us the ability to try out different things. And given that innovation is a big uh, push within the company, we can set up quickly, we can shut it down at low cost. Because really, it's a long term effect at this stage in Telco. Right? We're going to try many products to figure out which one will work in the market. And if you do that in a traditional on premise environment, I presume, and I think, and I'm sure, right, that the throwaway cost will be much higher than what we have today. Today, you actually practically have zero throwaway cost of hardware. You have to throw away your development cost, which you know could be a fraction of what the hardware could be. But it does add to our flexibility and ability in a way constantly. AWS was the dominant player, and it's still the dominant player today. And in the Philippines, there are very few options. Uh, we also looked at the type of support they offer. And truly, I think what made the relationship a success was the fact that they provided the support during the initial stages of our move to the cloud with regard to training, with regard to architectural support, uh, with regard to promotion within the company and so on. You know, they, they actually got our people ready and prepared to move to the cloud. That was very, very significant in terms of our uh, impetus uh, to get our people to develop systems on the cloud itself. Do you want to know why variety of workloads uh, in AWS uh, from portal applications, our 
our let's say web portals, our online store are running on, our self-service apps are running on, even our content registration platform runs on it. Uh, we actually use the Amazon EC2 platform for computing, the Amazon RDS uh, for relational database, and also the uh, AWS uh, Lambda, uh, specifically most recently for our self-service application uh, that we put on most phones. The AWS Cloud Service is available through both through a connectivity uh, agreement or through a services agreement, we're able to provide the same services that we use to our base, both the enterprise and SME category. The various benefits we have, uh, we've actually achieved uh, in moving to the AWS uh, platforms, particularly the AWS Cloud, we've seen an uptick in performance of different applications we put running on them. Uh, for instance, the self-service app I mentioned running on AWS Lambda, uh, we experienced a 2x uh, move up in performance. You know, we experienced zero downtime uh, for those systems on AWS in the past year. We've saved a cumulative amount of $2 million on a per annum basis. In the procurement time, um, you know, blow, like I said, given a big company like ourselves, 60 to 90 days wouldn't be unheard of getting a PO through the system, whereas in a matter of days, you can have a VM set up and a system working on the AWS. Globe went from 32% market share to about 51.7% market share in the fourth quarter of 2016. And now it must become the leading mobile operator in the Philippines. It's kind of odd that despite the fact that this computing power is so far away, right, we get a better response on our systems compared to something on premise here in the Philippines. We truly really like working with AWS because we're not people that is a great customer. It's more than that. It's a deeper relationship. They truly have our interests in mind. And not many IT companies today or tech companies have that. Thank you very much. We would like to request Mr. Mendoza to please join us back on stage.